City. From Hollywood. From Las Vegas. And from all over the world, it's the Bird Show. Bird's guest today from Hollywood, Shelley Winters. Dr. Irene Casorla. Pamela Mason. With Fort Lindsay and his orchestra. And now, here comes Bird. Welcome to the Merv Griffin Show. Welcome to Hollywood. Is there one thing about this town that never changes? Jack Sheldon socks. Huh? No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm ready for this show today. I don't know whether you are or not. We have three of the most outspoken women in the world, and they all happen to be here in Southern California at the same time. Ah! Oh, there's one of them. That noise was caused by one of the other guests trying to choke her. The three... Wicked witches of the West. We would call them here. Huh? It doesn't matter. Bill liked that. But they're, they're all backstage right now, putting their tongues up in curlers. They, um, <laughs> after much too long an absence, it is a treat to welcome back the two time Oscar winning actress who's never at a loss for her words, as her best selling autobiography surely proves. She's uh, currently working on the second volume of her memoirs which will cause a lot of socks to go up and down in this town again. It's bound to be another winner. Here's the captivating Shelley Winters. <laughs> Did you dress for me today? Yes, so? I did, I did. Why all in black? It's all look thinner. Oh. <laughs> you, you took off the weight and you kept it off. Kept you it really off. You did. Sold it. <laughs> we had a garage sale here. I'm like a yo-yo. I, I mean, I go up and down. I mean, I lose 25 pounds. But what about oh, your weight? Let's not talk about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you had um, a heck with weight. Who's, a hundred years from now, who's gonna know, right? Are they going to say Shelly was tall, short, thin, heavy? What is, my birthday was yesterday. Why are you saying all these oh, terrible wow. things? Oh, wow. I had, I had uh, a, uh, I had uh, a uh, 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 Which one? Oh, none of your damn business. <laughs> you know. How long have you been doing this show, including New York? 17 years. Well, when I came on, I was about 11. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Fast 28. Yes. Anyway, it, I had it's sort of a strange... Well, no, the first part was very nice. You know... I'm resting this summer, so I'm teaching acting at the Good Strasburg show. Institute. And I've got 22 gorgeous kids. They're between 19 and 23. They're very young, and they're just beginners. And about eight of them are very, very talented. Yeah. Really, I know they're going to be. So three of them got jobs since they've been working. Good. Well, study. you're famous for having discovered actors. You're right. I remember years I ago. I was infamous. No, no, no. Uh. <laughs> famous and infamous. Years yeah. ago, you told me about this uh, wonderful actor that you had met and you kept raving. I thought, ah, ha, ha, she's having another romance. But it wasn't that. No. He was Robert De Niro. Yes. Right. What, what, we're talking about his talent. His talent? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. yes. I guess it's true. I Are saw there him. others we should know that yes, you discovered? Yes, Raquel Welch. You discovered yes, Raquel Welch? Yes, I was in a, in a picture that they never show on television called A House Is Not a Home. Oh, the Polly Adler. Adler, yeah. Hey, I've never seen her on television. Too but dirty. There was this Oh, it was not. It was... <laughs> and by today's standards, it was Pollyanna. Yeah. Anyway... Did you uh, play Polly Adler? Yeah, yes, I sure did, and I, it was very interesting. I don't know why they never show on television. Maybe someday it was Paramount, I don't know. Anyway, uh, there was this gorgeous Mexican girl, Raquel Welch, and she, I think... I'm not even sure she didn't have a second name. And jokingly, it turned... And she was so nervous, she had one line to Robert Taylor. May he rest in peace. Anyway, uh, uh, every time she got up to say the line, she threw up. She was so nervous. She was gorgeous. Well, that right? must she have been disgusting. She was terrible. She got very nervous and ran off the set. And finally, I talked to her, and I think she finally just sort of, I said, don't think about the line. Just shake your, you know, as Booty. you walk. Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, don't think about him at all. Just concentrate on that. And she did, and she came across like a powerhouse. And I had my agent come out and see the rushes, and he said, no, he's just another pretty kid. And I, well, he's not an agent anymore. Anyway. <laughs> uh, 
then to, uh, one day at lunch, she said to me, Miss Winters, you know, I really would like to be a movie star. What should I do? And I said, well, if I was you, honey, if I looked the way you, I would go to Europe and I would get a photographer to photograph me and be on every cover. I was sort of kidding. I mean, I was just making this all up. And she did it. And got an every and In cover. fact, she married the photographer and she was, uh, came back to America a star. She was on every cover in England, Italy, France. And is she a hit on Broadway yeah, she, right she's now? she's a lovely girl. Whoa. She's, she yes, is. Yes. I love her. She was married very young, very young, and has two grown children. She's appearing on our first show when we start taping in New York. What are you taping in New York? We start on the 20th of this uh, month. Uh, no, I don't know what month what is now. September. 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 I don't and, even know what, uh, month, uh, what month I'm in. Uh, <laughs> what do you oh, mean you don't know what month you're in? I'm very, well, no, I don't That's mean another pregnant. expression. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no. no. I, let's, let's, How is life? Come on, is it good for you? Yes. You was know, this one of those birthdays yesterday that got you depressed? Well, it started out in the morning like that. I said, oh, my God. Then I went to my class where I'm teaching youngsters, and it was wonderful. You know, you can win Oscars and write books and husbands. And everything. But I think the real immortality is what you, what you learn and pass on to the next generations. I really think that's it. You'd rather work with the raw kids, too, wouldn't well, you? Well, because they don't have to learn unlearn anything. They're newcomers, so they don't yet learn what is, you know, they... Kids who have done television uh, series, they have to learn quickly, and they have to, they get sort of patterns of acting that are not good. Yeah. And uh, because they just have to perform. To me, it's the mer a miracle that anything good, those soap operas, are ever any good. Right. Because you know, they just, every night, they have to cram all these lines. But uh, when they're young, they don't know what not to do yet. And they, and they, are, they're, they will try anything. You know, they're so eager, and, they, and it's, it's been a wonderful experience. I've had a great summer. I was on vacation, so I taught. I'm preparing a Did you ever picture. take a trip? No. Just I, a nice was, trip where you I'm could relax? I'm too stingy. Really? Yes, I did just did a love boat. I went to Istanbul and Capri, where I've been, and Nice, and uh, All the Monte romantic Carlo. places of it the was world. Lovely. It was lovely. And uh, where else? Rome, Venice. I've been there. A terrible thing happened to me. What? I was in the Piazza Navona. That's a, a oh. plaza in Rome. It's beautiful. And it what restaurants on the plaza? I, I don't Piazza wanna, I Navona. Don't want to talk about Trescalini. That. Trescalini. I know restaurants. Oh, and that chocolate ice cream you get very late oh, at night. Oh, is it? And isn't there's that three, good? three big fountains uh, that Bernini. Bernini. Who's a fan. I always thought ice cream was called Bernini till recently. Yeah. I thought it was chocolate covered kisses. I won't explain that. You got to read my book. Yeah. I thought Bernini was chocolate covered kisses. Uh -huh. Not those ones in silver, but other kinds. Anyway. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, anyway, a kid came up to me. He looked about one, twi well, between 12 and 20, very young. And in Italian, he said, <laughs> he said, Miss Winters, would you please take a picture of me for my mother? How do you say that in Italian? Uh, uh, Come on, you Shelly Inverni, per favore. Uh, a uno photography for mi mamma. Uh -huh. You know? Good. Anyway, something like that. He was better. And anyway, I put my arm around. He was shorter than me, and I took a picture. I come back to America two weeks later, and in one of those terrible magazine star that we all read, The Globe, or something. There was a picture of me on the cover with this kid saying, Shelley Winters has robbed the cradle in Italy. Whoa! I, 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 I swear, I didn't even know the kid's name. Yeah. Well, sometimes and you don't have to, you know. <laughs> oh, we'll be right back after this message. <laughs> Dollars for you. She's talking about doctors again. Weight doctors, okay. Al allergists. Oh, just relax and enjoy it all. I yeah. am, I am. But I, I keep thinking as I go to a wonderful restaurant. Well, you know what, what really made me gain weight is I did that picture, Poseidon Adventure. That was it, and the ship Which, sank. Uh, yeah. I, thank you. They I, must I, be thrilled to have you on the love boat. Yeah, oh, yes, when I got on the love boat, everybody else got off. <laughs> <laughs> Glasses and a kerchief. The, anyway, the trip was wonderful. Was I really remember like, the. Oh, that, that's no, what, well, no, that's no, no, the Poseidon adventure. Go no, back wait, to the other story. Love boat. You said, why I don't go take trips? Because I'm too stingy. I'll always go somewhere free. They, ah. That's what I'm, I never didn't finish my train of thought then. No. But I want to go to the Orient, but sooner or later somebody's going to send me. No, there no, no. Your train of thought was the Poseidon adventure. You had to gain weight. Oh, that's it. Uh, and and uh, uh, thank you. I'm like a traffic cop. On yes. This show. And and uh, uh, let me see. I I I was about a hundred and maybe 39 pounds, let's say, and they wanted me to go up to 200, and I had six months to do it, and they paid for the restaurants. 
Whoa. Did we have fun? Mom is on 21. All the best restaurants in, uh, in California, Florida, and New York. Anyway. And what'd you eat? Everything. I had a wonderful <laughs> time. But, but I, I murdered my metabolism. It's a very tricky thing to do. So every time I see myself swimming, you know, they show it on... on, on, on on, uh, I look like the white whale. <laughs> you know, in that... Sh uh, uh, I'll never do that again. Nah, never nah. again, but I enjoyed it. Right, uh, right. Uh, uh. What you doing on the new book? You announced it on oh, uh, it, well, part two, shall it's we? Yeah, it's called uh, The Best of Times. And I've, I've only got to... What was the first one, The Worst of Times? No, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. Uh, anyway, um, I'm having a tough time. I mean, the early... Shirley or Shelley was easier to remember. I remember everything, but I want a different kind of book. I thought the first book... Everybody went after you. Oh, uh, who'd you, look at all the people you slept with, and they wanted to know names, and... Now you're doing stuff. it. No, no, no I'm, I'm reminding the no, folks... Now, for millions of people in America, uh, according to the sexual revolution now, I was not very promiscuous. Right. I don't think. What do you think? It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> I mean, I was married during that period, and I had a three or four lovers. That's not a lot. No. Compared to girls nowadays. But at one time? No. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. It was over a so long uh, period of time. The second book will well, not be I'm not going to make it sexy. I mean, I'll say I, I went to the theater with someone, or I saw uh, uh, someone for over a period of time, and so the audience will just have to guess. I mean, not the audience, the reader. Right, yeah. I mean, uh, just because I happen to have their t charts in my purse, that doesn't mean that any, does it? No. Well, no, that, that was, uh, I'll tell it, uh, it's in the book. I went to uh, the Copa with Sean Connery. Ooh. And when his first picture, uh, uh, and, and we went to the theater, and we had to go out with the, st the theater. We had to go out the stage with the other actors. And we went to the Copa, some nightclub in New York, and it, there was a lady next to us would not let us alone. We were with Sammy Davis and his then wife, and they, he, they were driving him crazy. And finally, he leaned over to this lady and said, uh, Madam, if I give you my shorts, will you leave us alone? Sammy? Uh, no, no, not Sammy, Sean. Oh, oh. So she said, yes. I, and he went to the men's room, and he had sort of blue bikini shorts, and he gave them to her. And for about 10 minutes, she left us alone. But then after she saw the shorts, she went bananas. Right. So he reached in her purse and took them away. No, I did come to think of it. I did it. But she wouldn't leave us. I reached over and got the shorts, and I put them in my purse. That was it sucked any good. I won't put it in the book. Yeah. <laughs> you movie last. stars have fun, don't you? Sometimes. Yes, I guess Did we you do. save those shorts? No, I raffled them off. <laughs> <laughs> Charity. Did you? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You know, I had some of Marilyn's things, a dress, and then I gave them to charities. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Uh, that's I, a nice idea. Uh, but what's, what's the focus of the second book, then? When you say the well, best of times. Well, the happy uh, years? I, uh, I, I, some of it. But it includes the... I was very involved in the Democratic Party, as you know. Yes. And uh, I sort of left Hollywood and a brainless bomb, blonde bombshell, and I went to New York, and I lived there and brought my little girl, and I started work in the theater. And I got very involved in um, social reform with John Kennedy and Lindsay and... Adelaide and Stevenson. Adelaide Steve Stevenson. I was the first one to do a sit-down strike, ban the bomb, with hum uh, Humphrey. Remember Hubert when Humphrey. Muskie and Humphrey were running together? And I, we sat down in Times Square to, you know, ban the bomb test, which they've done, incidentally. Right. I mean, that's, they've banned, and nobody's tested. That's why I think that we should have a nuclear freeze. I think everybody's scared of it. Right. And I think we should all write to our congressman and, uh, <laughs> because I don't think there's going to be any world to have anything in pretty Well, where soon. are you going to sit down on that one? Well, well I, I don't know. I'll think about that one. Okay. What was I saying? Uh... <laughs> but anyway, so I was... Oh, you were the first media. to work in yeah, a so political... Yeah, so I got very involved. I was working in a play called Hat Full of Rain, and that's where I met Tony Franciosa, but that's another story. Anyway, uh, uh, but I got very involved, and in, in I remember there was uh, Julie Belafonte and another lady and I, the landlords would turn off the heat. We had small children. So I went to a theater where there was a Democratic uh, rally, and uh, Eleanor Roosevelt was there, and they said, you're smoking again? You no, gave no. it up. I don't smoke. You <laughs> gave it up, Bert. All right. And he could, he, that's how he gained weight, so he started smoking. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, what was the thing? So Eleanor Roosevelt said, so somebody said, you make a speech, Miss Winters. And I said, oh, I don't think I can uh, make a political speech. And Mrs. Roosevelt said, uh, don't be ridiculous, Shelley. Uh, you are what we call a motional Democrat. You're a little weak on facts, but your heart's in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a political speech. 
And, but that, I got... That was very seductive, I'll bet. Yes, it sure was. So that, I, I have to write about those things, and they were sad times. They were the best of times for me because I felt very connected to and the involved, world. And involved, right. And very involved, and like I was doing something for other people, not just making money or my own career. And I worked, went to the PTA, and we had auctions at the school, and I helped. And we, we, oh, Mrs. Roosevelt showed us how to, we made a reform democratic committee that got rid of the Democratic Party that was then in existence, Carmen DeSapio and Tweed, 150 years in New York. Am I talking fast? No, yes, I am. No. Anyway, uh, they had been entrenched in New York for 150 years, and three ladies in the park, because landlords turned uh, off the heat at 9 o'clock and their kids got cold, we got, rid of, we got rid of the Democratic Party and had the Reform Democratic Party into existence in New York. So you did accomplish a lot yes. in those days. Yes. Could I have a tape of this show so I can remember it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm writing it in my book. Okay. We'll be back after this I message. Love you Thank you. Shelley Winter. It was 1954. Let me point out here that Shelley Winters opens in Neil Simon's comedy, The Gingerbread Lady, on the 5th of next month in Houston. And that maybe it'll be a series. Yes. Yes. Uh, one of the reasons I'm doing I did it for six months in, at the Deer Lane Theater in Chicago, then I did it in Dallas. It's the best part I've ever had. The audience, is, uh, I'm going to brag, they really stand up and give me an ovation at the end of it. It's about a lonely woman who's divorced and has an alcoholic problem. It's very funny. And first, the networks were scared of it. And I've never wanted to do a series, but I would like to do, do that one, one about sure, that one. So they may do it as a series. I and like I'll it. straighten mine out. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> See, they'd like to see you every week on television. I'd like to do it. And I'll straighten mine out. We open one week from today in New York City okay. at the Ed Sullivan Theater. All right. So. If I'm there, can I come on again? Oh, would we love that. Right. right now, would you join me in welcoming the witty, observant, and always outspoken woman with an opinion on everything. Would you welcome Pamela Mason? <laughs> you have appeared together. Yes, we did a film together. Yes. Uh, Shelley played the mother of the man to take over the United States. You probably forgot. Oh, yes, Wild in the Streets. Yes, no, I, I haven't. I've Chris forgotten Jones. what I played. But you, you, uh, a columnist, no? Did I? Did Possibly. I could have done. Yeah, yeah and, I've completely sort of forgotten, but I remember you played uh, the mother of this wonderful, wild young man who never was seen again. What happened well, to him? Well, he, he did one other picture. The spy who came in from the cold, I think. No, uh, with David McClure, something like that. Mm. And he had kind of a nervous breakdown. His name is Chris Jones, but uh, he's very like Jimmy Dean. I think he's... Yes okay now and he's going to go back he, to work. He was a terrific actor and yes. gorgeous looking. But you don't remember your parts, Pamela? No, how could I remember my parts? They only last a day. <laughs> oh, you do one day parts? <laughs> Always, yes. Oh, Always. she was very funny. She played sort of a head of hopperish television. Was that? Announced. Yes, how yes, I remember. remember. No, I, I don't remember. As a matter of fact, I don't remember anything. That's why I haven't written an autobiography. Oh, I was going to... Really, Pamela? I don't. I cannot remember anything. I uh, could write your autobiography. You know... You I know. did a picture with James Mason Lolita, and he <laughs> talked about you through the whole time. Did he? He doesn't yes. talk about me anymore. Oh, well, he did that. <laughs> I just saw that again recently. It, yeah, it was on, uh, I think, cable or... or uh, yes, it, it's on the Z or something. I, I caught a bit of it. I, I never recognize him when I see him. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I really have the most terrible mental block. Do you remember oh, James Mason? You I were married to him. Yes. I, oh, I was married to him for years, almost all my life. But you don't but, see him anymore? Oh, yes, I see him when he's here. You know, he's, he lives in Switzerland. Uh-huh. It's a terrible life. Oh, you know, hot chocolate in the afternoon and run in place in the morning and all sorts of... and takes pills, uh, vitamins every hour on the hour. Uh, he lives That's a, not good? Well, I, it's okay, but it's a terrible... Living in Switzerland is like being buried alive, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a cuckoo clock, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> or a bar of chocolate. Well, that's pretty good. Last time you were here, you took care of England pretty good with the English... <laughs> Uh, lady from the English consulate city over here. You've taken care of Switzerland. Well, I haven't entirely taken care of it, but I personally am not a skier or a skater. Are you into and health at all in pills? Well, and pills? Yes, I believe in all those things. I don't do any of them, but I believe they should be done. I'm a great believer in exercise, but I wouldn't do any exercise. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> Pamela, think of the book that you, know, you could write. I couldn't, because I can't remember. I did write a book about divorce, but I was going through the divorce at the time, so I naturally was sort of able to remember that. 
But I found it very difficult. Uh, my daughter once, when she was very young, asked me if I'd had any love affairs, and I said yes. And she said, who with? So I gave her a, a, a list as best I could remember. You and wrote? I, oh, no, I said it to her, you know, I told her. And then I had a terrible guilt, because I believed in being very truthful with her. And so when I got upstairs, I suddenly remembered two other names that I'd forgotten. So I, the next day I, I rushed at her as I said, I, I didn't tell you the complete list. I, I remember two other people, and I think I remember another one, but I can't remember his name. He was somebody I met on a train, and he went to prison afterwards, but uh, it was nothing to You didn't turn him in? No, 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 I, no. I, I just happened to meet him, and he was very attractive, uh, and, um, but, but I, I didn't remember his name, and I really didn't remember how it all happened. I, there was nothing else going on on the Is train. Is this show for the National Enquirer? I don't know. <laughs> They but wouldn't write anything this good, but I don't but think. But like, uh, uh, Shelley, I, I'm not promiscuous, you see. I have to be romanced. I won't... Uh, no, I'm no, not but Shelley's not. Shelley she said she's... She's not promiscuous. She's no, not. She, she's I'm not. sure she's not. I'm sure that she likes to be in love. Yes, I believe in being in love. Again and again and again and again. Yeah. <laughs> and then what about Tuesday? <laughs> but I'm more for being in you love. You like to be romanced. Yes, well, sure. And what does romance include? Uh, being made a big fuss of and being the only person in the world that they would even think of having anything to do with. I don't believe in this nasty uh, spreading it around and all that stuff. I think... <laughs> <laughs> I don't she, she's right. She's saying it in a strange way, but I... Unless I'm wrong... <laughs> unless I'm wrong, don't the young people... They're very casual about sex. And they're missing out on, on yes, all the fun uh, of it. Yes, know. the great part is the romance and the flowers and, sure. and the, the, the phone. And the, and the and the fear of not hearing from him and all that. Yes, and the, and the, and the, and the fear somebody else may have got him and, you know, wanting him back. You don't want him back if, if it's just a mass of different people. I mean, you don't care. One's the same as another. It's, um... I remember for a long time there, there was a, a young Italian in your life. He's still around, yes. Is he still mm. around? He's not so young now. No, he's uh, not. I <laughs> Now, Shelley's interest has always been in... She's married several Italians. Two, just two. 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 And I That's married two Englishmen, which was terribly stupid of me. I never right. would do that again. Well, what do the Italians have? Oh, well, Where should they we definitely do, don't they? Well, they believe in romance. <laughs> They're very romantic. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, I, I, even American Italians, uh, they are very passionate in the sense of, and I'm mean, not only in the physical sense, but a jealousy and yeah, and the they, scene. they and yeah, that's the right, and it makes scene. life very exciting. We'll come right back after this word from our sponsors out there. <laughs> Asked you for a list of your lovers. She asked me if I'd had any. You see, and I said, How yes, old was she? She was about seven or eight. But, I mean, she was getting... I, I brought her up to be a grown-up. I didn't bring her up to remain a child, because that's the big mistake most people make, is ah. they think their children are going to remain children, and they're not. They're going to be out in a very vile and wicked world. So it behooves good mothers to spread the news as early as possible while you're still there to help them. Mm -hmm. well, you can say, look, honey, the fact that everything's going wrong in your life is not so horrible. It happens to everybody all the time. We rear them... Incorrectly. Well, we, we try to keep them young, or we think we want to protect them from the world, and we can't. The world is a terrible place, as we all know. But you know, and I sent my daughter to private schools, and then when she went to college, uh, I went, she was in a very good college, Harvard, and she, one day she, I went and had lunch with her, and she said, you know, Mother, you did me a disservice. She said, private schools are wonderful, but that's not the world. I should have gone to public schools. You know, that's, that's what the world. George Burns told me the same thing. He said that he and Gracie sent their two children to private schools, uh, uh, parochial schools, and they realized afterwards they'd made a terrible mistake because the rough and tumble world they were going to be in wasn't in those schools where everybody was very polite and the nuns were charming and everything was very easy, pleasant, and well-mannered. And the world isn't like that. No. They cut your throat as you're on the way to the bathroom. Mm. So <laughs> this is what children have to face, and uh, it's, uh, they uh, have dope being sold them. If they don't take it, they're, they're punished. It, you know, it's a, it's a frightening place out there, and it always was. But is it more frightening today? Oh, yes, I think so, much more. Oh, there's more people here mm -hmm. now, for one thing. You know, they said that, uh, my, my father once said, the problem with the world is there's too many men on the chessboard. Mm -hmm. not, en not enough room for us all. Mm. And uh, uh, all of us aspiring and hoping. And uh, when there was only a few of us, when I first wanted to go into movies, I didn't want to be an actress, I wanted to be a movie star, which is quite different. I didn't find that out so much I later. saw you in a film mm. in England. You were wonderful. You had the lead in it. I don't remember I the name. I must have produced it myself. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was with James Mason. Now, what was the name? You were... We, we, did, we did several films together. I think it was a period and, picture. Um, 
was it they were sisters or um, well I suppose anything we were in <laughs> that time would have become well, a you're not going to write that book <laughs> she can't remember uh, what, will you marry again Pamela oh no what would be the point of my marrying again well, I suppose uh, I'm to a you bully. then no I'm a terrific bully I could never be the slave I was and uh, I don't think I could ever be that much uh, in, in love or, or dependent. You see, that's really the reason for women getting married is to have a baby, uh, because it's easier on the baby if there's a father around other than just a list. You know, that's yeah. not such a good <laughs> and, and on top of that, to su be supported. Uh, and uh, with divorce, as easy as it is, you can't guarantee the support. And once you're not having any more children, What's the point of a working but woman? But you're sort of putting women in a secondary position. They're not in a secondary position. But the woman has to be her, support herself. But when you're having children, you can't. Very often, unless you happen to be unique, uh, like uh, Shelley is, a woman with five children or four children can't possibly support herself because she's got to take care of a bunch of kids. So she needs someone to bring home the bacon, mm -hmm. which is what men used to be good at. But now we're having a lot of trouble. No bacon. Well, a lot of trouble getting the bacon brought home. It's over the state line they go. You know, I think the whole institution of marriage is being re-examined by young people. I think it's desirable, and a lot of people uh, uh, want it, and it works out for them. But I, I don't really know. I don't know whether the ERA is going to get mad at me, and I believe in it. Whether you can have a career and be a wife, I really don't know, uh, and have children. But did it interfere I, with your marriages? Uh, yes. When I had a choice between a career and the, my husband's desires, I was either not confident enough of the marriage, and I made the decision in favor of the career. Maybe if I had felt more loved or loved them more or didn't need the, the movie star thing, maybe I would have had a happier life and a happier marriage. I, I can assure you wouldn't, because I did exactly that, the opposite. You see, I did travel with him, and I did do everything with him, and I always wanted to be a movie star until I found out that it meant getting up at five in the morning for the rest of your life, in which I did, <laughs> lost interest in it as I got older. But at the time, I wanted to pursue a career, but I wanted him more. So I gave up the idea and just went and worked on late night TV shows and when he was asleep. But I didn't <laughs> follow a career for myself, but it didn't make the marriage work any better. I was wonderful to him. I mean, I carried his script, cued his lines, cooked him dinner, made a big fuss of him, blew smoke up him any time he felt that he needed a little more encouragement. Mm. And in the long run, we hated each other. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know that from the beginning? No, of course not. I thought he adored me. <laughs> mm. And I thought I adored him. I thought Does that leave its mark, Pamela? No, not if you sleep it off. Really? Uh, yeah. You've gotten rid of all of oh, that of course. anger I, and bitterness. I didn't and have any anger and bitterness. I was just worried about some keeping rage. the house. I wanted to keep the house. Uh, and I wanted to keep the children. I right. didn't want them to be sent to school in Switzerland. He believed in good schools, and I didn't. And I wanted to have the children here in California, which, where, which is where I love to be. And I wanted to keep that house that I've got with right. all my cats and dogs and things in it. Uh, and uh, that was my big worry. My raccoons. My raccoons, too, yes. Oh, my God, you breed raccoons? No, well, I don't. They breed it without my... <laughs> as long as I live, I will never I forget <laughs> one night at Pamela's having dinner. And she said, oh, here are the raccoons. And I looked out, and here were all these little animals with these little things. Charmed. And they had, they had a big plate of spaghetti. She serves mm. them spaghetti. Well, they love And they're all sitting they're there. They're very Italian. <laughs> <laughs> and there Everybody are cats everywhere. Not I, uh, there's a family of raccoons in my attic. I had to get rid of them. It was very ho you, difficult. You could, uh, easy. Send you them just, to Pamela. No, put a big bowl of Farina cat chow out. Yes. And they will uh, treat your place like the best restaurant in town. There'll never be a mess. They'll never destroy your roof. They won't do anything. My house is treated like mm. my maison. Really. Uh, has life ever been so desperate for you, Pamela, that you had to seek help, consult a psychologist oh, or something? God, no. I, I advise a lot of psychiatrists, but you know, but uh, oh, when they get in trouble. But uh, I'm the shrink, shrink. Uh, no, of course not, because you know, everything in life is a mess. And you just have to learn to, to reel with the punches. Tomorrow will be better, you have to assume. It usually is. You know, if you give it a chance. Thank you. But it is an interesting philosophy. But Everything a is a mess, and roll with it. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't agree with her. I but you can change the world. I, I, I I've gone to a psychiatrist for a number. Uh, I don't go now, but I see her if I'm in trouble. And I, well, I didn't go off into you know brave new worlds happily ever after. But many of the ladies who, let's say, uh, started when I started, a lot are dead. Some are. Alcoholics, some are in much worse shape than I am in, and I think it was because of the psychiatrist. I really mean it. Well, I, I, it gives you. But the ones I, you're I, talking about were heavily 
into visiting psychiatrists. No, they we? weren't. No, they, they weren't. I know. Huh? No, they weren't. She killed herself in the psychiatrist's office. Yes, but yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> it's it's going a bit far. You know, if you, it is a science, and if you've got a broken leg or a disease, you go to a doctor, and if you have a mental illness, if you keep repeating a pattern that is very destructive, no. uh, a doctor can, can help you. Well, I think we deal. all agree they can help. I don't. But, but you, uh, you don't. <laughs> but you've never gone to one, no, so I have not know. Well, I, I, and she I hasn't never, felt the need for I one. I haven't felt the need for one, because, you know, I, I believe in crying, if you feel like it, and I also believe in kicking furniture, if you absolutely feel you must. I also believe in having a big row with a guy. I think one definitely tells him what one thinks of him, and you feel a little better for that. And I also believe in martinis. So, I, I mean, uh, I think there are many ways to soothe the shattered nerve. Right. But I don't see that talking it over with somebody who's more confused than you are yourself, which most psychiatrists are, uh, is helpful. Because, I mean, it, it, they wouldn't be in psychiatry if they hadn't been very confused people. Now, I always, I mean, they usually are. I mean, I'm, I'm, I adore Dr. Tony Grant. He's one of my favorite people in all the world. Right. And I always call myself her shrink. Because uh, Tony is, is absolutely wonderful with everyone else and hopeless with herself. But, which is why she went into psychiatry. I think they usually do. Now, to my mind, the world wouldn't be so overpopulated if anybody had a sex problem. Mm. They really don't have a sex problem, and they know how to breed instinctively. The thing is that they try to do it with the wrong person, someone they do, that doesn't attract them. The only reason you, you have mean a like problem... boys with boys and no, girls with girls? Well, no. that, that, that uh, that's a big problem well, in our a, society yes, nowadays. but not, not if they <laughs> like it that way. The problem <laughs> is when you try to get somebody to explain to you how you can get an exciting sex life out of somebody who bores you to death. That is not the way to do it. it the way to do it is to wait for the right rat to crawl out from under a rock. Rat? Well, I mean, that's, I'm, uh, so you, that's a man. You listen for man, yes. Uh, or the right uh, uh, mouse, if you were going to reverse it. And when the right one comes along, you feel attraction. You don't have to feel attraction every night. I mean, it, it isn't natural. People are not supposed to, but we've been driven to the point of thinking, ooh, I don't feel anything for anyone, so in that case, there's something wrong with me. I must go and be analyzed and fix it. Uh, Masters and Johnson, I think they probably did more harm than anyone in the world, teaching people to stick tubes on themselves so as to find out what their reactions are. Mm. Well, you know what your reaction is. You are either yawning or you're saying, where is he, where is he? Right. Your reaction is normal. <laughs> she makes it sound awfully easy. We'll come back. <laughs> Pamela Mason. <laughs> Shelley just figured out that 10% of the studio audience is married. That's just all. 10? There's only 10%. I asked them to raise their hand. And, and we give them three weeks, don't you think? No, no, no. <laughs> I think nowadays people, when they get married, they're married a long time because I, I think, think they try it out first yeah, for a yeah. while. Well, we all tried it out, didn't we? You, well, I, I, I No, I never wanted to get married. I liked to get engaged, but I didn't like yeah. to get married. I didn't want to get married. No. I didn't ever want to get married, but I did, and because I'd forgotten why now, naturally. You were in love. <laughs> I thought I was, but I mean, I could be in love without getting married. Uh, I don't think that, that marriage is the... I, I never believed in a $2 certificate mm. issued by anybody, because, as we know, Marvin Mitchelson is always waiting in the wings. So to I... To handle the divorce. Yes. Uh, he handled mine, you know. He, yes. was, he was... I found him. Did he do well for you? He was wonderful, yes. Oh, Great. Right. Well, now that you've damned the whole psychiatric community, <laughs> it is a thrill for me to present this famous psychologist. <laughs> Hello. One of the country's leading psychologists uh, who has written this book that has been so successful called Nice Girls Do, I guess Bad Girls Don't. Oh, no, but Bad Girls Do, too. Oh, every everybody do. Everybody do if you get the right person. She now can be heard daily throughout the United States on her own radio show, which is on ABC's uh, Talk Radio Network. Her expertise ranges from problems with overeating to helping people heighten their sexuality, and I guess everything in between. Here's Dr. Irene Casorla. Yeah, okay. Well. How they do so far? Irene? Well, you know what's interesting. I know Ooh, why. Oh, little leg is showing there. Well, I hope so. I know why <laughs> Pamela has never really made it with a psychiatrist. Wanted to be a patient made it with a psychiatrist. <laughs> Visited is acceptable. Visited. Yes. Right. I mean, made it in the therapeutic milieu. Oh. Mm. She's so bright. 
and she's so much fun, and she never stops talking. I've never heard you so silent. I've never heard you. Oh, Although when, so I, when, I, when we do these shows, I don't want to say a thing. I love listening. But you can't get in. You oh, know, yeah. he can, and oh, he yeah. wants to say anything. We'll give him a space. That's Sam, right. Look, she's, when a white dress, she's about size four. <laughs> yes, I know. She must be doing something right. Well, she's dieting, obviously. No, she just was eating. Well, oh, she's a nervous wreck. A nervous I'm wreck. hungry all the time, and I do watch my diet. No as, question. As a psychologist who conducts interviews, obviously with the clients the patients have you heard anything thus far on the show that really titillated you and you'd like to examine uh, I like how honest they both are they're both very authentic and they're they're talking they've talked this way all the time years ago was outrageous the way they spoke but it's, it's as though the era has caught up with yeah, both we're old fashioned now <laughs> <laughs> were hippies before they had the word. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They're all they're originals. I think they're absolutely original and they're authentic, and that's why it works for both of them. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> you you operate or you function or you do your work in Southern California. Yes. Does Southern California have more unusual problems than the rest of the nation? Well, Beverly Hills certainly does. If you're not, <laughs> if you're not thin, and if you don't eat yogurt all day, it's, you just don't work. Mm. You know, at the turn of the century, a woman could be nice and round and wonderful, but today she really does need to be thin. And men as well. Look at you. You're, you look wonderful. I try to. I try to. <laughs> but there really is a stigma now about being heavy. It's like you're a second-rate citizen. Well, haven't they found out it's kind of dangerous? Uh, as a matter of fact, I attended a conference on obesity, and you know what is healthy? You're both going to kill yourselves. Emaciated is healthy. Nothing. So I boring. I don't believe it. Boring. I, and also, True. who wants to land on a bag of bones? Right. <laughs> I, mean. I, haven't, uh, I haven't had any complaints. Well, <laughs> I know who your friends, and I would say that some I'm of them are I'm leaving on this <laughs> yeah. There's it's trouble starting here in paradise. But the problems of um, uh, craziness and bizarre acting people usually neurotic, starts neurotic, in Southern neurotic. California. Neurotic. Well, well you know, unhappy. I don't think, see, I don't think we're any more neurotic here, and I don't think we're any more happy. I've worked on six continents, so I really know people, and I've treated royalty and people who are out of work, and I know what makes them cry, and you know what it is, what, what you were talking about. Loneliness. Yes, and who loves me, and who's going to leave me, you yeah. know, and, and who thinks I'm beautiful, and... Or if you lose a cat. All yeah. right. That's a loved Makes one as well. Miserable. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also too much booze will leave you crying. Yes, well, you know, I'm, I'm a health food person. I treat people to get them healthy inside and healthy outside, and my patients get better, so I will fight with What do you hear on the couch, Irene? What are men's complaints against women, and what are women's complaints against men? Men Generally. complain that women aren't responsive enough sexually. Frigid. Well, not frigid, but... Don't give a damn. They don't make them feel wonderful. You see, a man and, and women, they're, you're, little, you're little. Men and women are little, and they want to be loved, and they want to be told they're adorable and precious, and too many women are so unresponsive and they're so busy with their... Now, this tends to be the woman who doesn't have a career. There's some uh, literature to suggest that the career woman is more responsive sexually. Hmm. Isn't that an interesting yeah. But also, a man can always make a woman responsive by telling her how wonderful she is. That's yes, all we're waiting for. <laughs> but the reverse. reverse. <laughs> you see, the reverse is true. A woman hmm. can make a man wonderful by honestly showing him what he, what she adores. That's what Pamela said she did for all those years. I did. Well, oh, sure, I did it to everybody. And but the woman. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have time when you have a career. I mean, I was married and I had a, a date, a calendar, and I said from nine to ten uh, exercise and then a massage and then a facial and then um, a lunch interview and then. You were all scheduled. Up. Yeah, but see, yes, that's and all. Yes, I worked with my husband me. from three to four, and when he saw that on my calendar, he, he lost interest in the ma marriage. Well, I don't blame him. All you were concerned with was yourself with your but massage. But I had a career. I mean, there was nothing I could do about it. But when we, we were talking about, you know, men and women and what keeps them most responsive, women tend to forget that the man needs all this encouragement. encouragement. And early in the century, there was this, this nonsense about a woman being submissive. So the average woman today, when she's lying in bed, not like us, of course, is, you know, sort yeah, of I'm there. I'm asleep. She's there in the, uh, it's something like this. It's what I call the do me position. <laughs> Well, well, you mean don't muss my hair? And Are you going to show this on the air? Yes. <laughs> I have a problem with 
the do me position is she's assuming, like say we're married, right. and, and we don't know each other very well, you know, it's a new marriage. Well, you don't know what to do to please me. We and should ask. Exactly. Or things. she should. No, well, you don't. Pamela, of course you I do. treat people who've been people married 20 years. People rub up against you and you know. Yeah, you <laughs> know because you're a very special wom wo a woman. No, I was around when I was She's 14 women. also, She's you know. Special. Talk at the turn of the Most century. Most women, <laughs> when they're lying there, they're, th they're thinking to themselves, I wish he would rub my elbow. Does she say it? No, she keeps quiet and he doesn't know what to do. Is that something I don't do. know about? No, she'd go into a terrible <laughs> panic. <laughs> rub your elbow and find out it's all, or you forgot to put your cream on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> little crusty. She's lying there thinking, why doesn't this fool rub my elbow? And he doesn't know what to do. He's frightened. Say you're the husband. You, you know, you know I'm a little annoyed, but you don't know how to proceed. And what she wants is for him to rub her knee. But does she tell him? No, no. she's just annoyed. Now, she's like a road map to him in a strange city. Mm. He doesn't know, shall he tickle her Mexico or kiss, kiss her Canada? Oh, well. <laughs> when you get to Ohio, will you let me know? <laughs> her Bakersfield right. or, or caress her New York City. He doesn't know what to do. But what about the knows. Twin Cities? St. Paul and New York? <laughs> we'll come right back after this word from our local station. consideration paid for by the following. Come fly with Eastern to the beautiful beaches of the Bahamas. For the third year in a row, more passengers have flown Eastern than any other airline in the free world. Eastern, America's favorite way to fly. The remarkable new Isuzu. The one car in America that delivers over 40 miles to the gallon and goes for under $6,800. Now available from American Isuzu Motors. The problem is uh, boring partners. Wrong Maybe people. the wrong people. Maybe it they shouldn't be. be married. I think people tend to find their neurotic level of water. I think they find each other. I think we find someone who resembles mommy and daddy. And you know this business about chemistry? It's neurosis. That's really? What it really is, yes. Well, who do men marry and who do women marry? Men uh, marry men their marry mothers. Their mothers. And women marry their fathers. I've no, heard that. women marry, oh, marry their mothers as well. Only, of course, you know, he, he is a man. But it's, in any, it is a potpourri of mother and father. Hmm. But you see, we learn the first four years, we learn how to act and how to deal with guilt and blame and closeness. And we learn everything, intimacy. And when we're older, we're still filled with those early rules and those early limits. And so when we, when we date on the first night, yeah. if you sort of smell emotionally like my father and mother, I like you. But you could be Robert Redford or yeah. Merv Griffin. Right. And if you don't have the same neurosis as I do, I'll say, oh, I don't like his politics. Uh, I didn't like, uh, yeah, you know, the green shirt he was wearing. But yeah. isn't it familiarity that you see you're comfortable with your own face and yes. your own type yes. Yes. because it makes you feel at ease? Yes, but psychologically, that, familiar that familiarity is neurosis. It's the style. Now, for me, neurosis is okay. Can you interrupt okay. that, uh, our <coughs> doctor? I'm curious about it because I've been in analysis a long time. I mean, I finished, but I, kn I know you have an I inner uh, scenario, like a paper cutout, and you, when you find somebody who fits the paper cutout, they're se sexy and attractive, and exactly. you like on But can you really, even though you understand it intellectually, can you change it? That's what I'm curious about. You can about. change it only in a therapeutic situation. Now, I have patients who have changed uh, patterns, and they've been able, you stay but within the says, general. that's my type. That's what they mean. And they know it. Do you know that I can walk into a room and a man won't say anything, and just the way he moves and, you know, the way he asserts himself, I can tell right away. And I'll bet you can do the same sure. thing with a woman. Sure you can. You know? But it, we always call that chemistry. Yes. You connect. But it's the familiarity you were talking about or... Then you want to know them better and about. then everything, and then you get married, and then you really got to go to work. Yes. Trying to figure out how to make it last, right? You know, on my program, I, as you said, I'm on every morning from ABC, 9 to right? 11 on the ABC satellite network. And people will call, and some of them have been married five years, and they, they did the same thing. Like, er, er, all, all of my husbands, they'll say, uh, each one was an alcoholic, yeah. or all of my husbands uh, never touched people. me. And then I'll say to them, was it mommy or daddy who didn't touch you? Or was it mommy or daddy who was an alcoholic? And every time, one of the parents, right, right. Fascinating. 
Right. We'll come back right after this message. Dr. Irene Casora. That's true. The Rex Umbard family brings you something very special every week. You are loved. With exciting music by the entire Humbard family, featuring Liz, the grandchildren, and Maud Amy. Plus an inspiring message from Rex that will make a difference in your life. Join the Rex Humbard family as they share the message you are loved this Sunday morning at 10. I'd like to thank you all for buying my favorite product, Maroff Dakota Farms Cheese. You know we're not talking processed cheese. We're talking real natural cheese. Made the old-fashioned way right from Dakota Farms. Means you're doing something special for all the folks that eat at your table. So to make sure you're buying a real natural cheese, just remember our Dakota Farms advertising slogan. Natural cheese from Dakota Farms. <laughs> Is this what your breath smells like? If you smoke, it probably does. You know, bad breath is bad, but smoker's breath is worse. You need new Topol Smoker's Breath Concentrate, designed especially for smokers. Topol Concentrate fights smoker's breath with breath freshening ingredients five times more concentrated than these. That's 275 concentrated sprays. So even though it costs more, it lasts a long, long time. Try Topol Smoker's Breath Concentrate because bad breath is bad, but smoker's breath is worse. Don't leave now, you're just moments away from LA 11 News and the very latest on the efforts to avoid a threatened RTD driver strike Wednesday. An update on the huge brush fire that threatens the Napa Valley wine country and workers scour the Hollywood freeway for more than $7,000 in accidentally spilled silver. All right here next on KTTV. Well, I hope you all made notes today, because you certainly got a variety of suggestions and advice out there. I thank you all very much. It was great. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>